Hello everyone, this is Professor Gulia. Um, I actually figured that because our class was canceled on Monday, creating a video for you would be a very quick way to get some of the things that I, we were going to cover on this past Monday. I was going to walk you through the directions for essay number three, but because I want to start moving along with writing the rough drafts and then eventually the final drafts over the next couple of weeks, I actually think that we can do some of this electronically. So at this point, we should be done with essay number one. So that's the uh, that was the narrative description. So when you picked a moment in your life and you described it in as much concrete detail as possible, now we're, we should also be done with essay number two. That was the persuasive essay. So the goal there was to set up a conversation about an important cultural or social issue like abortion, gun control, um, really anything you wanted that was of importance, and then announcing a position on that topic and supporting it. So now we are in week 10, going into week 11, so we're moving to essay number three. So these are going to be um, basically um, descriptions of someone else's life. This is what we're going to be doing for the next month or so, and these are due at the, the final drafts are due at the very end of March, so we have some time, but I do want to get moving with stuff. So here's the topic for essay number three. So we will be using at least three resources to write a narrative about a, the turning point in blanks life. So this blank, this person that you choose, they can be a celebrity, they can be uh, an historical figure, they can be um, a politician. All that really matters is that you can write a narrative about their the turning point in their life by using resources available through the library. So don't choose a personal friend, don't choose a family member, um, choose someone who is famous, who ha who's going to have a bit written about them. All right, so this is what we're going to do to address the assignment. So basically choose someone you are passionate about. This is going to make it so much easier. I'm not giving you a person and that's to help you out. You can choose a, a favorite baseball player for all I care. Just as long as you're interested, as long as you're passionate about them, that's going to make it easier for you to push through the next few weeks. Then once you choose who you want, and if you need any help choosing between people, just let me know. But once you choose them, we are going to read around and find out as much as we possibly can about the chosen topic. Um, so if you've chosen Kim Kardashian, for example, first step, we're going to go into the library database. We are going to find as much as we possibly can, just collect information and read around. And as you read around, you'll start to figure out what the turning point in that person's life might be. So then after we choose someone, after we read around a bit, we are going to turn it all into a descriptive narrative about the turning point in that person's life. So basically what we're doing is we are combining essay number one and essay number two. So we are still going to be using concrete details. So for essay number one, we really practiced freezing time and giving as many details as possible, you can use that as you choose, when you choose the turning point in that person's life, you can describe things uh, with concrete detail by using senses, you can describe the events from the person's uh, own viewpoint if you want, you have some creative leeway here. We're also going to be practicing letting the reader inside another person's head. So this is very similar to the skill we used for essay number one. The big difference is going to be instead of letting someone, a reader, inside your own head, you're letting them inside a celebrity or famous person's head. So that's, that's the big change. And then we're also going to continue practicing the big picture idea. So for essay number one, we had this. So when you wrote the narrative description, the idea was to eventually land on a big picture idea about what you took away from that event, how it shaped you. For essay number two, the big picture was your argument, your thesis. So if you um, argued, uh, 
that we that the U.S. needed stronger gun control. That was your big picture. That was what everything went back to. Every piece of evidence should have helped you work through the idea that the U.S. needs to have stronger gun control. So here in this essay, the big picture, which is a thesis, is going to be that blank is the turning point in the person's life. That's what you're proving using a narrative, using a story. So I want to talk quickly about what a turning point is. So a turning point is any moment of huge change for the person. It is the moment when the person decides on the direction of their life. So if you choose Oprah Winfrey, you are writing about the moment that made her Oprah Winfrey, when she started to uh, figure out who she wanted to be in the direction she wanted to move in. So a turning point can be good or bad. It can be a good or a negative event. So all that really matters is that the event shapes the person as a human being and that it affects their future. So your goal is by the time your reader gets to the end of the essay, they should be able to, you should have convinced them that that was a huge moment for the person. So for example, and I'm just throwing these out there, uh, you can take them, you can leave them, you can, uh, there are so many different ways to do this. So if you chose Steve Jobs, so you can write, write about the moment he took over Apple. He was actually fired from Apple early on and then later becomes the CEO. Uh, so if you are choosing Malcolm X, you can write about his time in prison. This is the moment when he was really thinking about things and he started to figure out what direction he wanted to move in. So that can be um, his turning point if you want it to be. If you choose, and I talked quickly about this example before, if you choose Oprah Winfrey, you can write about the moment she entered the entertainment industry. So when she figured out that this is what she wanted to do. So how will we be finding information about our subjects? This is a research paper. So the goal is to find reliable information. This means that we're not going to rely too much on Google, Wikipedia, or other sources that include a lot of information we cannot count on. These are Google and Wikipedia are sources that are edited by regular individuals. Sometimes they're really, really good. Sometimes they're not so good. So we're going to find other ways to find reliable information. So we're going to do this, and this is actually to make your life easier, not harder. We're going to do it using the Berkeley College Library website. And we practice this with essay number two, with the persuasive essay. I showed you guys the opposing viewpoints database, and we poked around and we found all different kinds of topics. And, um, you know, hundreds of different persuasive essays, easily hundreds. So these are going to be the three databases that are really, really going to help us out. The first one, if you use this, it is going to make your life so much easier. This can do the vast majority of your research for you. It is the, Bale biogra the Gale biography in context. We'll practice using it in class when we come back to class uh, this coming uh, session. But you can go into the library database the same way we did for essay number two, and when you go into databases, you can just search for biography in context. So it's actually going to be under B, not G. Uh, so you're looking for a biography in context, you click into that. If you just type your person in there, most likely you will come across a lot of different sources. And they're all reliable, so it can get it done really, really quickly. So if you go through the Gale biography in context and you're not really sure um, that you have the information you need to have, there's also the Credo database. You get through this the exact same way. So you go into the library database, the, the library website, you click on databases, and then you go into Credo, that'll be under C, and then Britannica Academic. So these are three sources that'll really, really help you out. Again, the Gale biography in context, so with the letter A next to it, that's going to be your best friend. All right, so this that's the end of this presentation. I want to give you some very basic information about what we're doing to help you with the next step. If you are struggling at all with how to start figuring out the research and figuring out the research paper, let me know and we'll figure it out going forward.